We served as the developer of the atrium project, working with a close team of consultants and construction trades to bring about the building that we're sitting in now. We're very pleased to be the recipient of this award, and I think it's a testament to all the great efforts and ideas that came from our Slata consultants, uh, in this case most notably Scott Murdoch, the landscape architect, and Frank D'Ambrosio and his team on the architectural side. Most of our best ideas we can't take credit for. It comes from the wonderful groups that we, we work with on this project, but also have been working with on numerous projects in the past. So they deserve a lot of credit, and it certainly is a nice validation of all the time and effort that they put into the project. This is a classic example of what we should be doing. Um, we're in, people don't even think we're in a watershed right now, but we're in a man-made watershed, basically. Uh, there's big storm drains, all buildings and roads are connected to the storm drains. They exit into the inner harbor and it's basically an underground uh, watershed uh, just built on top of it with buildings and paving. And in terms of if we're going to try and, um, we're not going to try and restore these to streams, but we need to do something where we think about water quality and trying to get them back to a more natural system. And what we're trying to do is integrate these natural elements into things like rain gardens um, with green roofs and trying to get some of that natural function back into an urban setting. The vision of this project was multifaceted. Uh, it's a very large and prominent site in downtown Victoria. And the mandate that we gave to our designers in conceiving the building that we're, we're now in was to create a market leading quality office project that not only was an asset for the eventual tenants of the building, but also an addition that's very, very positive to the community and the built form landscape of downtown Victoria. Part of green building design is uh, thinking and scrutinizing and research. That means every element, every material you see, um, every technology used within the building from the, the components in the glass curtain wall to the types of wood are all scrutinized and viewed through a green filter. That is their environmental impact guided by um, several programs. LEED is one of a number of uh, yardsticks for um, looking at materials and, and, and methods uh, with an eye to uh, low embodied, lower embodied energy, uh, low material consumption, energy consumption, high energy efficiency, things like that. So every decision was scrutinized um, against those criteria. Um, I think it's important because we are aligned. A lot of the values that are involved in the LEED program that the atrium um, has accomplished are similar to what we're doing. Um, we've taken everything that we do and look at it from an environmental point of view and kind of analyzed it. It brings aesthetics and environmental concerns up to the top uh, alongside of um, pro forma and uh, financial balancing. I think human well-being um, ha has been influenced and continues to be influenced by aesthetic beauty and comfort. Uh, those things have to go together with financial viability um, and environmental sustainability. We also set forth a target to really push the boundaries in terms of green building technology. So from our perspective, really take to a new level uh, the building science uh, that we're able to integrate into our buildings to create a building that will be relevant and functional for the next 50 years. Features that we've incorporated into the building are the, the green roof on the, on the rooftop. Um, it manages stormwater on, on for the building itself. We've also uh, incorporated uh, rain guards around the periphery of the building. Uh, they basically take runoff from the roadways uh, which, when you think about it, it's got oils and grit and sand and different materials that get picked up by the stormwater when, when we have rain event. Uh, they get washed into these planters that we've developed and all those pollutants get filtered. Uh, plants sort of assimilate some of those nutrients and, and suck it up. Um, and we basically clean the water. So it's acting like a big biological filter. I think, I think this project is deserving because this to me is, is where stormwater management and, and integrated uh, watershed management hit the road. I mean, we are always told that in an urban setting we can't do it. It's too hard, it's too difficult, there's too many pipes, there's too much infrastructure. Um, we can't do it. And why? Because it's not a stream anymore. 
this is, this is what it's all about. I mean, you know, if we can do it here, we can do this anywhere.